which is moving to the Big 12 in a couple of years. If you're Notre Dame, you're retired Jersey every game going forward right now. They are undefeated Notre Dame when they hang somebody's right. Jersey in the Raptors. They are. Alabama in the home whites and Houston travels in the blacks and it's controlled by the Cougars. So they'll move from left to right in front of Jimmy and I right to left on your television screen. Sasser is zero. He's the guy Jimmy highlighted. Shed is there. Point guard Jamal has been outstanding. 29 assists, only four turnovers in his last four games. Ten on the shot clock. And Sasser being guarded by Shackleford with a man and a hand in his face. Offensive rebound grabbed and kicked back out to Shed. Really good job on the offensive blast to rip a ball away by Fabian White. The runner, and that one falls by from Jamal Shed. Houston, a team that can punk you on the glass if you're not ready to play. And they are tremendous at running down misses. Those black jerseys rebound against one another. Ooh, for there's that in-your-face defense. Javon Quinterly just ran into a wall. Then a quick pass down low and a really good run for Charles Pediaco, the freshman out of Canada. Ravi, both teams defensively really impact the ball screen. They try to win the line of scrimmage yeah. and don't allow the ball to get turned corner. Very difficult to get paint touches against these two clubs. Tyler Edwards, good score. Reggie Cheney. Fabian White's really improved his jump shot. Little ball fake to get a defender in the air, and Edwards kicks into the corner. That is White. And he gets the friendly roll. Just a really good player, Fabian White, on both ends of the floor. Probably their best screener, a really good ball mover from the four position. Watch out. Yeah. Ravi, Houston struggled last year against Baylor with the middle ball screen. And Kelvin Sampson has changed his middle ball screen coverage this year. So far tonight, they're over for 2. Yep, Betty Akos got all four points currently with a couple of good dimes. You have to physically hard tag those rollers. And Houston has not done it on either play. Well, Bediaco came out. He left a man open. Now the baseline pass. Corner three. That's good. Edwards picks up his first three of the night. Quinterly with Bediaco setting that high screen for him. And we'll start it again. Quinterly one of the best point guards in the country. Three ball, Gary, Jawan, Gary buries it from the corner. And both teams who've waited a long time today to finally get on the court. Nine o'clock local, come out on fire. Houston has to give a little bit more of attention to the roll man, and it allows that corner ball three to have enough air. Alabama known for its three-point shooting. They want to become known as a real difficult team to score on, improving that defense, one of the things that Nato's wanted to do this year. Five on the shot clock and a runner high off the window, no good. We may get a call on Keon Ellis who undercut Cheney going for the offensive rebound. But both of these coaches, Jimmy, certainly in Kelvin Sampson's case, has been around a long time, but he has put Houston basketball back on the map. It's not like they never were good. I mean, this was one of the great college basketball programs for a long time he's got them back and the folks in Houston are all about now not only their baseball team their major league team they are into this basketball team right there's not five better coaches yeah in college basketball than Kelvin Sampson and every coach listening to me right now says you're you're exactly right Sasser open three of that short Shackleford goes up and rips it down and they got a three on one the dish to Gary oh out of nowhere with a block we'll see if they call that a foul, and they will not call the basket. But go to the free throw line, and shooting two will be Juwan Gary, the sophomore to Columbia, South Carolina. Sat out a couple of years ago with a knee injury. We know Alabama wants to run that basketball up your backside. And, and think about this. Last year, Alabama's average offensive possession was 14.2 seconds. That was number two pace in the country. This year, they're not quite there. They're about 15.1. Amanda is their their team speed is electric And there's Nate Oates third season as the head coach here in Alabama He of course spent a long time at Buffalo He was a high school coach his road to this part of his career happened a little differently than many others An assistant but for a very short period of time. He was really known as the coach at Romulus High School in yeah. Michigan went and watched a lot of Michigan State practices and Kind of cut his teeth on watching Tom Izzo's club defensively. 
Sasser putting pressure on Bediaco, so he swings it to the corner. And Shed comes up short. Good fight there by Cheney to keep it alive. Sasser a wide open three in and out. Shackleford is their best scorer, and Judy said at the top, man, they focused on him in practice. You should have heard how many times they said <laughs> Shackleford's name during Houston's practice today. Winterly run over Bediaco and the behind the back pass. And he will go to the free throw line. Boy, a lot of contact out top with Bediaco and Shed. And how about Quinterly with a little behind the back dime? Yeah, and Matos is determined to attack Houston early in the middle third of the floor. That time Bediaco came up and, and flipped the ball screen a couple of times, keeping it off the side, forcing Houston to respond to the roll action and the downhill ability of Javon Quinterly, who's very difficult to stay in front of. So as you see Quinterly talk with Shockerford, one of the things that Oates had said to Quinterly, we need you to be great offensively. You need to make as big a jump as a leader yeah. as anybody. It's your team now. Well, that's what the quarterback slash point guard should be doing for you. That's why part of the reason why Bryce Young won the Heisman. But Quinterly is a star at rejecting the ball screen and driving the ball through the elbows. He is a star. Yako doesn't get that one to roll. He's just a freshman, and they love him. He had a really big game against Gonzaga. Seven points, eight rebounds, and six blocks on, on a bad ankle. There was no back down from Bediaco with Drew Timmy that night. Blow for blow. Shackleford screen. Now Sasser has Gary on, and he's got ten on the shot clock. On a one move, he pulls up, and that's no good. They started out three of four. They missed their last five. And there's a foul out top. We'll get that one on Sasser. Perhaps a little frustrated. Good start for Alabama. Well, Houston got on the offensive glass early and got. 10-7 as the team's back on the floor for the timeout. Alabama on a 6-0 run and some substitutions into the game. Get our first look at J.D. Davison, the outstanding freshman. So he and Quinterly will now both be on the floor at the same time. Outstanding point guards also into the game. Noah Gurley for Alabama, 0 and 2. Darius Miles set play for Shackelford out of the break, and the three-pointer is too strong. Houston has rebounded 50% of their misses in this game. The guys in white jersey have to hit a black jersey every time the shot is taken. Sasser's 0 for 4. Shed. Little contact. Little push off underneath and watch Davison run. He's got Shackleford on his left. He'll go there. Shackleford rattles one in. That's a three. The speed that Bama pushes the ball is phenomenal. And Davison knew the entire way up exactly where he was going with that basketball. Five-star guard player of the State out of Alabama last year. J.D. Davison wasn't the fact that he just wanted to stay at home. It was a coincidence that the program would shoot him as well as any. And there's a hard stuff on the baseline by Reggie Cheney. But the program that suits Davison's game perhaps better than any is Alabama. Who Quinterly had a layup and he didn't realize it so he kicked it. Attack the free throw line and the first three attempts. Look at Davison go up and they're going to get him on the offensive foul. Ravi, both teams, they, they really space the floor beautifully. I mean, they don't get on top of each other and guard each other. Where that really plays off is how difficult it is to keep Alabama and Houston off the offensive glass because you've got dudes coming with a running start from about 20 feet with separation. From on mark number 12 into the game, so is Josh Carlton, the UConn transfer, who has had double figures in three of his last four games. Sasser is 0 for 4 from the floor to start. We get Nate Oates. Yeah, yeah. they did. They tech. Gave Nate Oates a technical, and that came from an official underneath the basket. There was an official standing right next to Nate Oates who wasn't doing any of that. Didn't make a call at all. Yeah, Nate Nate was in the year of Rob Rourke and Joe Lindsay on the baseline. Comes with a stick. So you'll see that. Rob Roy was standing, you talk about with an earshot, he was standing next, next to, to him. Nate Oates. 
But Joe Lindsay underneath the basket must have felt whatever the comment was was directed right at him. So he's talking to Rob, and then out of nowhere, you see the official from underneath the basket. Call that's, a technical. Yeah, that's rare. And, and, and all you ask for from a coach is the right official making the right call at the right time. And Nate, Nate will have a problem with that one and probably won't let it go for a few possessions. 13 11. Edwards three, Kyler's too strong, and now Quinterly's got a three on two. He takes it himself yeah. and lays it up for the left hand. He had the same layup opportunity the last time and kicked it out for a three. He is, Quinterly, a magician with the ball. Josh Carlton, size advantage. Sasser, that's a three kick wide open, and they're not making their shots. Davison gets knocked from behind as he went up to grab the defensive rebound. That'll be a foul against Houston, and it'll go to Tremont Mark. Houston comes in 38% from the three-point line, making nine a game. They seem to be sped up just a little bit right now by the Alabama defense. We talk about Houston's defense, number two in the nation coming in. Alabama's in the top 20 as well. Houston 4 of 12 from the floor. Alabama 5 of 7. That Shackleford shot left him open. Yeah. Free ball, bottom of the net. Ravi Houston really loads up to the ball side. So if you can get to the second pass out of the ball screen, you will have some open jump shots. Sellout crowd of almost 15,000 on his feet. Good hands. Davison knocked it away. Underneath a couple of opportunities, and it's finally put in by Fabian White. The offensive glass is a real weapon for Houston early in this game. Quinterly thought about a shot from way down, and they're going to get the reach. And Edwards picks up the foul. What I'm talking about, that last three point by Alabama. Houston loads up to the ball. So if you come off that ball screen and get it reversed, boom, get it reversed, one more, you're going to have some really good looks and get some closeout opportunities against Houston. Quinterly just threw it away. You know, we called Nate Oates last night trying to get a recommendation on a couple of barbecue places we had to choose from, and he was at his daughter's <laughs> nine-year-old game. Brielle, they won. Yep. And uh, I asked him what was the average possession length in that game, knowing that he would know, and he said around 12 seconds, not because they shot it quick, but because of all the traveling calls. <laughs> and, and, and Brielle was not happy with the officiating taking after her death but she didn't get a technical she did not get a technical but she was drawing up plays yes, she was <laughs> <laughs> well, both clubs really trying to impact those ball screens defensively sasser yeah. step back three that was impressive and he did it right in the face of keon ellis a good defender he is smooth and you talk about guys that have really gone from one level to another this year johnny davis wisconsin keegan murray at iowa L.J. Cryer, Baylor with a big game tomorrow. That, this kid's right there with him, Sasser. Yeah, bad pass. That's another turnover, and here comes a runout. A lot of times, runouts will lead to open threes, but this time, Alabama gets back on defense. Sasser's got five, and he's feeling it. Fires another one. That's too strong. We're going to get a foul underneath. It's going to go against Carlton for Houston. We'll come back. We'll take a look at Nate Oates drawing up uh, some plays. His daughter, in fact, drawing up some plays. Started to change, but he got a scholarship offer from Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah. Right? At Texas Tech? Yeah, at yeah. Texas Tech, who's now coaching Kyler Murray, who people think if there's a comparison to Young, it's Kyler Murray. Yeah, He's listen. quarterback at Texas Tech when he made him that scholarship offer. And by the way, the scholarship offer came well before he was a high schooler was Pat Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. Yeah. Back-to-back -back Heisman winners for Alabama. Devontae Smith last year, what, 6 feet, 170 pounds? Yeah. Bryce Young, 6 feet, and, and maybe 188, somewhere in there. Man, huge Valentine's inside that Alabama football jersey, though. Sure are. Now, Sasser, at that time, he got a good screen, and he comes up a little short. And now Davison will try to push. Five-star prospect point guard has been outstanding. Beautiful. Gary with a nice follow, and he lays it up and in. But things just change when J.D. Davison is on the floor, don't they? There's just another level of push. Yeah, he's a full 6'3", standing beside him, maybe with a hair closer to 6'5", 
which he says he has not cut <laughs> since the second grade, by the way. Right. Tremont Mark drops one off, and a little hesitation, but too far underneath the basket was Fabian White. Rabbi, we know this about Alabama. They're going to shoot threes, and they're going to get the ball near the rim and take rim shots. The reason why I say that, 87% of all Alabama attempts last year were threes or rim shots. Through the month of November for Alabama this year, 93% of all shots are threes or rim shots. Set three, that goes, and down on the ground is Ellis in a heap. He may have rolled the ankle. They're helping him up, and uh, he is... Looks like he's going to be okay. Basket does not count. Put out of bounds on the catch. Keon Ellis has been Alabama's best defender overall. And he's got a rebound a little bit tougher from that small forward position when he slides there, but one of the better two-way players right now in the SEC. His shooting number is 52%, 41%, 87%. .. Very difficult to check Ellis for 40 minutes. Gary open three high archer too strong. That's deflected out by Betty Ako, and they'll get 20 more They just turn it into a foot race with their spacing on offense to the offensive glass good look underneath but off the hands of Gary Hadn't cut his hair since second grade I, I asked him in pregame warm-ups. That was the answer. I have no reason not to believe him Way too long and Quinterly got a chance to push it watch out Ellis and he was knocked into on Ellis now in the last two possessions that he's been involved with has ended up on the ground in pain Got to be careful about leaving things in the aisle people run you over <laughs> Well, we found that out last night in the Birmingham airport as we pulled in the, the, the speed I'm talking about for Alabama Houston's right there with him man If, if you're a non-athletic dude tonight, don't check in this is an Alabama team that, under Nate Oates, I think he's always going to have that 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six big guard that can slide up or down a position on both ends of the floor, can rebound out of whether he's guarding a 2, a 3, or a 4, and that, that sums up 14 in white. 87% free throw shooter. The first one is good. Could you have a better start if you're Alabama? And it is a close game, but they've shot 7 of 10. They've made half their threes, the 3 of 6. They're shooting 70% from the floor on the other side 30% for Houston. They're six of 20 And Ellis's second goes down Tajay Moore who is a human highlight reel checks in for Houston number four got a handful of dunks that have made Sports Center Sports Center top 10 plays so we'll see if we go above the rim a few times with number four in black. He is as explosive of an athlete that Kelvin Sampson has ever coached. And I mean, that's, that's a big statement because Kelvin Sampson has coached some dudes now throughout his career. Winterly and Shed, one-on-one. Shed, the floater. That doesn't go. And look at that. Battle for the offensive rebound. We're going to keep it right here. They're going to get Betty Ako or Quinterly. And they're going to get Betty Ako, the fresh. Talk about his development under... Nate Oates. I mean, Nate Oates famous for, you know, the guys that can shoot the threes, but Betty Ako is going to be a critical part to this team. Yeah, he's going to be a handful. This kid, it came down to Alabama, Duke, Texas, Michigan, Ohio State. Baylor was involved. And uh, what he did at the battle in Seattle last Saturday really jumped off the film to me because he's a young kid that just went blow for blow with Drew Timmy, who's arguably one of the top three or four post guys we have. But He's an important guy because of his rim protection, and he sets very physical, fast screens as a freshman big. Well, the bad news is in the last 10 seconds, he's picked up two yeah. fouls. Fouls fast, too, doesn't he? He does, so he's going to have to go, <laughs> go to the bench. I'm not sure there's a better rebounder in the American Conference this year than this kid on the line, Juwan Roberts. And, and Houston, they, they target and they recruit rebounding. And that's why this kid got a scholarship, Ravi. But he is 13th in the nation right now. Jawan Roberts, offensive rebounding rate of 17%. Oscar Shibwe leads the country at 27%. Kentucky should have got any more touches today, by the way. But well, this kid's a beast on the glass. Shibwe was terrific today in a Kentucky loss to Notre Dame. Yeah, but too many times, the wrong guy taking the wrong shot gets you beat on the road. That's what happened to Kentucky. So Noah Gurley back into the game, so is number two, Darius Miles. 
And Miles drops it off, and Gurley, that's a turnover. Happened the last time we had substitutions for Bama, and that leads to an easy run out and dunk for Sasser. Ravi Houston getting more confident in their middle ball screen coverage. They're physically, bam, hard tagging the roll guy, and then scrambling out of it. Kind of Xing out on the backside, difficult to do. Ellis in traffic, and there's another turnover. That's their sixth turnover. Yeah, you get loose with the ball around Houston. They, they are very aggressive with their eyes, and they attack the ball with two hands anytime the ball comes into a gap. One possession game. The Sasser three could tie it. 22-19, eight and a half to go in the first half. Shed with three on the shot clock. The high archer, it's a one-point game. Win your matchup. I think... Houston and Alabama, they have a lot of that built into their DNA. Win your one-on-one -on -one battle at either end. Winner Lee got fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. On the other end, Jamal Shedd played only 16 minutes in last year's NCAA tournament, and now he has become the starting point guard, partly because of some injuries, but once he got the starting, the starting point guard job, yeah. they weren't going to take him off the floor again. Uh, here's, good. here's what happened with Jamal Shedd last year as a freshman. I think he had a little nonsense about him in terms of just the seriousness of the game. And Kelvin, as all terrific coaches do, called him in after the season and said, look, the nonsense has to go. I I'm trusting you with the basketball going forward. I'm going to put the rock in your hands and run this ball club. And has it worked well? Well, he's only got four turnovers in the last four games, and he's only 18 years old. This is a, It's a grown man culture for the Houston Cougars with Kelvin Samps. Truth talk. I tried that with you a few times and has not gone quite as well. Yeah, you're not, it doesn't have the same impact. Now, if Kelvin said something to me, I, I, <laughs> it may have a different impact than if you do. <laughs> but the last four days together, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> we have we had have we eaten five times today? The tip off was so late. We've had five meals today. <laughs> Two workouts and three naps. <laughs> Two shoot-arounds and a couple of phone calls home. And Sasser fires away again. Offensive rebound. We're going to get a foul right on the floor on Noah Gurley. You see Houston attacking the offensive glass, and it's starting to lead to some foul trouble for Alabama. Ravi, you cannot decide to be tough for two hours right before the tip. I mean, if you're... If you have the type of toughness that Houston plays with on the glass, it's deep, deep down in your soul, man. It's in your DNA. It's like breathing. It's a non-negotiable, and Alabama has to answer that tonight. Set play, no good. Offensive rebound, and that's a put back yeah. and up and in. You mentioned it. Jawan Roberts leads the team with almost seven, seven rebounds a game, 7.7, .7, and he's picking up some more. Quinterly, pretty play. Well, with the foul trouble, he may have to take over a little bit. No Shackleford on the floor. Uh, he's back on the floor, but no Betty Ako on the floor. Quinterly so good. Right to left, left to right. Keeps you off balance. As explosive of, of a guard in the SEC off the first bounce that we have. Josh Carlton. High, and Whoa. that's too high. Well, if he was throwing it to himself, he'd probably still have the ball <laughs> inbounds. But you can't do that. No, the, the Houston defense, though, is come to life a little bit they struggle with the middle ball fame coach yep now whether he's going to be able to get into the hall of fame remains to be seen but if you speak to the majority of coaches he's right on that top level Ravi, similar to baylor lose four starters off a of final four team and they are right back to being relevant nationally i think baylor's the best team in college basketball we'll find out tomorrow if they can handle, handle villanova just yep. watching teams play but that's the sustainability that Kelvin Sampson has as his program because he refuses to lower the bar in any area for anyone. Look at where Houston is picking up Alabama. There's Gary. He's got a three. That was deflected, and it comes up well short. Houston's defense extends. You know, you watch practice, and coaches will say, I need you to pick them up in four-point territory, yeah. which is basically saying another five or six feet out beyond the three. That's where Houston picks you up. 27% three-point defense by Houston. The, the one concern I have for Houston is they are allowing 25 three-point attempts per game. Now, I think you have to keep that number manageable against Alabama tonight. Think about this. Alabama's lost once this year to Iona. Their season low in three-point attempts at 17. Yeah. Can you keep it at that number if you're Houston? Right. Off the missed free throw. Ellis Hill. Launch a three. That's too strong. And 
Where did Gary get away with a foul there? It looked like he affected the ability of Reggie Cheney to come down with the basketball. Cheney, you'll see his left hand is bandaged up here, but does Gary get away with hitting him in the arm there and, and thus making him unable to make a catch on the ball? I, I, I think he did, but we play on. There's, there has not, nor will there be a below the rebound game, uh, rebound in this game. <laughs> if you are not an above the rebounder in this ball game, you may not get one. Juwan Gary, 6'6", 218, forced his way into the free throw line and a foul. Houston has five steals. Alabama doesn't have any. To be pointed out, we'll learn a little bit more about both these teams tonight. We'll learn just how good Baylor is tomorrow against Villanova. You and I saw Baylor in the battle for Atlantis, and they were every bit as good. There's some coaches that have played them that said they may be better than they were last year. So there's the game between the two top six teams, Colin Gillespie and Nova there in Waco. They take on undefeated number two Baylor. That's three Eastern, two Central ABC in the ESPN app. So number one, Purdue loses. I I'm not sure you want the throne, but I think most teams that are considered to be in that class, yeah, we'll take the number one label. If Baylor wins, they'll be the new number one. Regardless of rankings, Ravi, I think the best five teams we have in the college game right now in order, Baylor, Arizona, Purdue, Duke, and Kansas. I think Arizona is the second best team in the country, especially with their win today at Illinois. Very impressive. Well, there are the top five, and Duke off that loss to Ohio State. Of course, they beat Gonzaga. That ball knocked right into Gary Sand, and he picks it up on the baseline to knock it in. That Duke loss to Ohio State came after that Gonzaga win, and you could tell, having done that game, they were gassed in the second half. They kept letting Ohio State hang around, hang around. Yeah. Finally, the Buckeyes, Ed Key had a huge game that night, got the victory. E.J. Liddell was huge today. He's playing his way right into the top of yep. the list for National Player of the Year from Ohio State. Wide open, got to make him. That's an air ball. Sasser had that kick. Shackelford, there's Gary. He's ahead. Count the basket. He'll go to the free throw line. Jawan Gary picking up the scoring slack in the last few minutes. Rim to rim in three seconds for roll tide roll. They come up with it. They get the eyes up. Two bounces and the throw ahead. And those athletic fast wings that Nate Oates puts on the floor time and time again playing out in front of the defense. Not easy to do against a very disciplined Houston Cougar team. That's a bit of a rough sequence for Fabian White. He had the open three in the corner through an air ball and then sends Gary to the line to try to complete the three-point play. He does not. He's got 10 on three of five from the floor. And it's a 31-26 Alabama lead with five and a half to play in the first half. And if you don't hard cut in this game, you're not going to get open. Sasser is two of nine from the floor. Quinterly picking up way out top. This time an offensive rebound will lead to a foul. Juwan Roberts over the top. Yeah, you got to fight for everything you get in this ball game. And a good job by Juwan Gary to come down, rotate physically and get body on body. A lot of guys will rotate down, but they don't come with contact. Gary did a good job. This is one area Alabama, Rev. They got to get better. Were they 65% as a free throw team? Yeah. And they were knocked out of the Sweet 16 last year, going 11 for 25 from the free throw stripe in an overtime loss. Houston already with 10 fouls. Gary's free throw. That looked good. Knocks it down. He's got 11. He's a 58% free throw shooter. And again, Betty Ako, the big center. Two fouls with about nine and a half to go, so he's on the bench. Juwan Gary is having himself a night. Bama with a nice blend in their offense right now. They've taken eight threes and seven twos. If you're Houston, do you stay attached? and see if Alabama can make enough twos to beat you, or do you allow them to continue to have a nice blend?
Good dump yeah. off in Carlton. That's a nice play. Sasser's taking a lot of those shots. This time dumps it off to the big UConn transfer. And Carlton scores. S Sasser won his matchup. Drove the ball through the elbow. Defense has to respond. Well delivered pass. Winner Lee. That's a tough catch by Gary. No foul called. And the tie up there between Carlton and Gary. Possession arrow sticks with Alabama. Anytime the ball is driven through the elbow, bad things are going to happen to your defense. And Alabama has to step up and help. The rotation is not quick enough. Win your matchup. So big in a game like this. Gary got Good you. position there. He just beat him to the baseline. Houston, not great defense by Juwan Roberts. No, Houston does not switch on baseline out of bounds under. And they are suspect to give up a basket each half because of it. Sasser all the way to the hole. That's too strong, but the offensive rebound up and in by Carlton. He draws a lot of attention to Sasser. The value of getting the ball on the glass in this game cannot be overstated because the offensive rebound. Ooh. Good pass. Gurley underneath. Count it. And he'll go to the free throw line. But Javon Quinterly is putting on a clinic with his interior passing tonight. Yeah, he has been a star in the alley part of the floor. Off Purdue, who had never been number one. Today, Arkansas, BYU, Kentucky, all lose. We had a prominent head coach tell us, well, I'm not sure there are any great teams this year. Last year, you knew who they were. I'm not sure we know who the great teams are, if there are any. Yeah, no, a, a year ago at this time, all of our eyes were on Baylor and Gonzaga, and rightfully so. And I go back to what my eyes tell me right now. I, if I had to say who are the best two, it's Baylor and Arizona, but a huge last 48 hours for the Big East. Wins by Seton Hall over Texas. DePaul beat Louisville. UConn, without their uh, studs today, still take down St. Bonaventure. Creighton over BYU. That's good stuff by the Big East. And I think given that uh, we do see the SEC a lot, it's, it is interesting. The struggles that many of the teams had. What's Auburn ranked? 18th now? I think people are sleeping on Auburn. I think Auburn and Alabama have become the two best teams in this conference. And LSU is really good. Played really well today. Yeah. But Alabama and Auburn, they to me, appear to be the two best I've seen. No, they, they look they look different than anybody else in the SEC right now. And so much can change. But I mean, you got to play people. And I think that's what Nate Oates has done as a head coach at Alabama. He's not oh. afraid to go anywhere and play anyone. And, you step up in competition like Kentucky and Arkansas did today and get stung. It knocks you back a little bit. There's no, I'm, I'm with you. There's no way there's seven teams better. 17 teams better than Auburn right now. There's no way. I agree. You mentioned Alabama's schedule. How about number one average opponent in the net ranking? Alabama hasn't played against a quad four opponent this year. Nine of their 12 are ranked in the top 25. And, of course, you're doing the game against Memphis next Tuesday, which felt like it was going to be a good game. Memphis is a mess right they now. They are a mess. Shed blow by, kick three. Moore buries it. Give Shed all the credit there. He blew by Quinterly, and that allowed everybody to collapse on him, and that left a wide-open shooter in the corner. Yeah, I like your description of the blow by, because that's exactly what it was. The, the speed of Shed, much better courtside than it is on film. Davison back in. He oh. tried. And that's a freshman mistake there. And here comes Houston. Sasser contested three. That's down. Well, you talk about turning a turnover into three quick points. We just saw it. And Sasser buried it. He's in double figures. That is his corner. That is his honey spot. As well as anyone. Texas Tech, the Chris Beards team, that's what they do as well. You attack them, man, they attack you. And you have to figure that out as a freshman within this game if you're Davidson trying to make plays in a crowd. Good game tonight. 38-37, 2.40 to go in the first half. That time Davidson does kick it. Keon Ellis is there. Heard the word bait. Bait them a lot. Bait them in to thinking that you're not going to be there. Calvin Sampson used that a lot today. And that's what can lead to some turnovers. Two free throws coming up for Alabama, as you see. Sampson, who is still fiery on the sideline. Got his son and his daughter involved with the team as well. Taking both Oklahoma and Houston to the final four. Yep. Has not lost one ounce of fire. 
Jimmy, 20th annual women's Jimmy V Classic tomorrow. The rivals, Kentucky, Louisville. One Eastern time, noon Central. And then number one, South Carolina, hosting number eight, Maryland. Both games on ESPN, the ESPN app. One app, one tap. To donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research, go to V.org. So on the bottom line, you follow along Paige Becker is the outstanding player for UConn, the reigning player of the year, considering surgery, surgery on her knee now. Yeah. Originally, I assumed she was coming back in January. Shaka for there's a collision between he and Sasser. Those are the two veteran big boy players. <laughs> Sasser may have tweaked an ankle, so we'll keep an eye on that. He's definitely walking on that right ankle a little gingerly. Moving screen. Yeah, that's an easy call, and I, you know what? I, I like teams that get called for a moving screen a couple of times a game. At least it means they're daggum trying to screen somebody. And Reggie Chaney comes up. He's all about contact. He brings the contact on every play. And he'll pick up one or two a game. I can live with it. At least the dude's trying to get his teammate open, you know? Yeah. And he got a dadgum out of you. Is that yeah, the first well, one tonight? Now some guys are afraid of contact. They just they shouldn't be on the floor. I know, but I said, was that your first dad go? No, it's my second. It was. Now you're listening very well once again. <laughs> Same problem in the bomb office. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Shackleford, a lot of one on one. The lefty throws it up. He didn't get the roll, and helping out on the defensive glass is Sasser. So the ankle's okay. 90 seconds to go, first half. Oh, in traffic. What a shot by Marcus Sasser. He's got 12. To me, both teams play bigger than they actually are at the rim. So it's hard to get easy, clean looks. You have to go in expecting contact. Don't look for a whistle and play big boy ball. Gurley is going to get fouled underneath. He's going to go. I mean, how does this ball get through all these arms? Well, he's low, he's strong, as he, and he's tough until the very end. And then just, just enough of a long reach to get away from the shot blocker. Really well done. You're going to have to make some hard guarded shots in this game. That was one of them. G, Money, Gurley, and Gary have the last 11 points. Is that a, is, is that a thing? G 12. Money? What's that? Is that a thing, G Money? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course it is. Check your wallet. You got G Money in there. Wednesday football signing day, Alyssa Lang, Roman Harper, ESPN National Recruiting Coordinator, Craig Hubbard, provide wall-to-wall -wall coverage, all 14 SEC schools, highlights, and evaluations. Where the nation's top football recruits will land SEC now, three-hour signing day special, noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, with live five-minute updates, 9, 10, 11 a.m. Eastern, over on the SEC Network and the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Neither team can get separation in this game. I know Alabama's had the lead, but it hasn't grown more than seven. Shed denied by Gary in a two-on-one. Davison himself. Wow. That ball was deflected. Gary couldn't finish. On the rebound, here comes Houston. Just the type of game we expected between these two terrific teams. Back and forth. Everything contested. Sasser, ankle breaker, right over Davison. That is as good of a one-on-one -on -one play as you'll have seen all day long in college basketball. Because Davidson was low, he was hungry, he was tough, and Sasser just got separation. Mm, big mistake there. Quinterly, he beat his man. And that's the second time he's been in the paint. Yeah. And I know they emphasize that three-point shot, but you've got some layups. You, you cannot continue to try to force plays in a crowd if you're Alabama. Look at Sasser. Marcus Sasser, 14 points on 13 field goal attempts. Juwan Gary, 16 points, leading the way for Alabama. You know what's just as important as how high is your ceiling? How, how high is your floor? When you don't play your best, can you still win tough games? I think both Houston and Alabama have a high floor, meaning when they're not at their best, they, see, they can still beat you with toughness, defense, rebounding, and speed. Three on the shot clock. Game clock has five. Get on the glass. Sasser! That's short. Two seconds to go. Oh, that's a critical foul. Wow, yes. Good job by the freshman Davison to go up in traffic. A guard getting a big defensive rebound. And with just 1.9 on the 
game clock. He's got a chance to add two points. Right, that's a really big play. Davison's one of those kids that jumps as high as he needs to because he went right up with a very explosive athlete in Tajay Moore. This kid's going to be special. You, you think about people that are they're, they're superstars and their hair is just as recognizable as their mm -hmm. game. Yeah, I, I, I think of Tina Turner and Elvis. And he, he might be right there in that same conversation by the end of this year. Oh my gosh, you actually did think about that, didn't you? Did you write that down? De De Dennis Rodman, there's another good one. Just think about it. superstars with hair. I got to think about floors being elevated for one, and I got to think about hair as we go to break. I love what you're doing there. We will take a timeout. Great first half here in Alabama on the night that. A trusted handle will be tested for the next 20 minutes. A couple of other numbers to keep an eye on. Juwan Gary's 16 points is already a career high. But Alabama averages 29 and a half three-point field goal attempts per game. The last time they took 17 in a the game, they lost to Iona. They took eight in the first half. How many three-point field goal attempts will they get off? Sasser starts by launching one. It goes in and out. Well, a good set play, though, to get him a fade screen on the backside for that backside bomb. Did everything except drop. Yeah, to, your, Rabbi, to your point again, I, I own it. The only team to beat Alabama this year held Alabama to 17 three-point attempts. And Houston is tracking that number right now with their defense. Shackleford missed. Edwards had it in the middle, and he gives it to Sasser. Betiaco, the big guy's back in. He plays with two fouls. Good ball fake. Yeah, and nearly right. got his third, but he avoided it. And Fabian White knocks in a couple. White and Cheney really play well out of the dunker spot and even stretch him out to the corners. Pretty good playmakers for 6'8 guys around the rim. Boy, what a pass. Bounce pass to Juwan Gary. The block is called on Edwards. Quinterly has just threaded the needle back and forth tonight. Well, he has the hands of a magician and, and the speed of a cheetah, really, especially in the open floor. And he's so quick with his first and second bounce to get separation. Edwards will pick up his fourth foul and he'll go to the bench as Gary shoots a couple. Of course, the story around Quinterly, he committed to Arizona, then decommitted, went to Villanova for a year. His waiver transfer was then denied by the NCAA. He sat out a year. He watched from the bench and he was terrific last year. And he's even better this year. Well, he's MVP of the SEC tournament. He was outstanding in the month of February and March. And you know, forget he was a former two-time New Jersey Player of the Year out of Hudson Catholic High School. And talking to Nate Oates, Quinterly is now concerned about the right thing. I think the nonsense is behind him and out of his life. And it's all pure ball right now, which you have to have at your point guard spot. Shed, good look away. He caused Shackelford to go out and the three-pointer is good it's a really good pass by Shedd how about the stroke by Fabian White the confidence that he now has as a shooter right I love it wasn't always that way uh, he can make one a game and Kelvin Sampson's got a four slash five man that can step to that corner and knock one down on you and the form has improved and I just think he's such a valuable piece because I, he's it, but he is their most consistent physical screener on the offensive end as well. Deion Ellis, it's good defense, boy. That just looked like good defense to me. This is one of the did. issues with the blocking and the charging. It looked like Jermon Mark had just moved his feet to get in front of the defender, and he had some contact, and he bounced off him. Are you blowing a whistle here? Well, the defense moved up. Yeah, you, you officiate the defense, Ravi, in a motion play like that. Get your eyes on the defensive jersey and then judge from the ground up where the defender is. I think that time the defender was moving into momentum, mm -hmm. created the contact. Houston on top, 46-45. is the second half underway. Advantage Houston. Can you win the line of scrimmage on those ball screens that Alabama's trying to run? Back-to-back -back wins by Houston right there. And Gary has some contact there. We're going to call yeah. a jump ball. Good block by Reggie Cheney. Who, for all intents and purposes, is playing with one hand, his right hand. You see him getting high fives. You don't see the left hand coming up very much to get any. No, but he is a warrior that fits 
that Houston system gets outside the restricted arc. Four yep. seconds, Jimmy, on the inbounds. Quindley will have to fire it up here on a tough shot. F Buries it. Wow. That is huge. Reggie Cheney just lost his defensive discipline on a short clock and kind of gambled at the three-point line, and Quinterly makes him pay. Alabama back on top by two, under 18. Fabian White walked with it. Got a little greedy after he knocked down that three. If you lunge or reach in this game defensively, you're going to get beat. And both these teams excel in those one-on-one -on -one plays. So far, Houston has <laughs> has made a habit of committing fouls and not committing turnovers. They only got four turnovers, which is terrific in a game like this, especially with Alabama turning up their defense. They've committed 19 fouls already. It's crazy. And look at the number of free throw attempts for Alabama in this game. They have doubled up Houston. And that's a big number to overcome on the road. Alabama 18 of 22 from the free throw line. Houston has attempted seven free throws. They've made four. Quinterly lobbed to oh, Veniaco. That's a perfect pass. I mean, what a pass because the defense was there to tag, but the tag defender was small, and Quinterly read it with his eyes and just got the ball up top. Gary's been the scoring star, but Quinterly has been the brightest star. Four-point game, and Alabama extends its defense a little further with Ellis on Sasser. He lost it on the way up. Jump ball, loose ball, out of bounds. It'll be Alabama basketball. When you tag with an undersized defender, you're suspect for the over-the-top pass. That's exactly what Quinterly did. He saw Tremont, Tremont Mark rotating over as a 6'5 help defender, throw it to the seven-footer up top. Really well done, Alabama doing major, major, major damage in this game in the alley part of the floor. Quinterly just whispered in Bediaco's ear the last what time pass. down. There's another kick. That three just off the front iron from Ellis. And Quinterly can, can make something out of nothing, can he? Again, he is so quick and so low, 13 and white with that basketball. And really good passing with either hand this yep. year for Alabama. Yep. White trouble in paint. He throws it up and he gets it to go. Fabian White five points here in the second half. Had an ACL injury in 2020. Fought his way back over eight or nine months. Cheney bodied, and then White and Quinterly got into it a little bit on the baseline. It's interesting. Quinterly had a shot blocked by Shed, and Shed kind of laughed at him or laughed with him, and Quinterly wasn't enjoying it. And here, you see Quinterly not enjoying that either. He's playing with an edge. I think he's loving this game <laughs> and this atmosphere, but he's edgy tonight. I think both teams play with an edge. And there, there is zero back down. There, there's just enough swagger slash cockiness out of both Alabama and Houston that you have to have. You yep. have to have it if you're going to be a special elite level team. Hard not to be a fan him. of the way that Quinley Whoa. plays. What a block there. And we go the other way. <laughs> out of nowhere came Tremont Mark, wow. and that's a turnover. <laughs> Got a beautiful back screen. Off the out of bounds under play, but the recovery speed and length in this ball game is as good as you're going to see. Because this is a layup waiting to happen, but no, it's not. Just went and got it, didn't he? Tremont Mark. He did, and then he lost it thanks to the hands of Keon Ellis. Winterly nudge there, that's a foul. So, Ravi, what are we seeing Nate Oates do? He's using Betty Ocko in the middle of the floor as an on ball screener, and that time he switches it up and uses Shackelford in kind of a smoke screen or a ghost screen action, continuing to get Quinterly down towards the rim. Shed now got three fouls. There's a whole handful of Houston Cougars with three fouls, and a couple Edwards and Cheney with four each. And there's going to be another one on Carlton. Deion Ellis. Jimmy. I understand tough defense. 
Yeah. Like 22 personal fouls made four. Nope. This is a good free throw shooter on a team that struggles a little bit, about 88%. Having no one in college ball plays the analytics game more than Nate Oates. That their offense is all about rim shots, free throw attempts, and three point attempts. There is no middle game in Alabama's offense. And he puts just as much emphasis on the winning the free throw battle as he does winning the three in the rim shot battle. Ellis knocks it down, of course. Nate Oates was spoiled by Herb Jones last year. There's a lot of Herb Jones and Keon Ellis his ability is. to play both offense and defense. And he may end up being in an SEC Player of the Year conversation. The floor space. You better keep Houston off the offensive glass with his spacing. Quinterly stepped around a Carlton screen, and how about Shed with a little floater in the lane? Really under control, wasn't he? And a little bit of a, little bit of a crowd and a tough two. Pediaco, we've seen that a handful of times where Shed just gets blown up by that Pediaco screen. You're going to screen a screener into the Quinterly. Javon, the runner, no good. And it's picked up by Carlton. Just can't get separation. That's, that's how this game feels all the way to the last minute. As for Houston, a tie or three grab the lead. Sasser, he's going to get fouled. That's Betty Ocko's third. And we'll take a timeout. We will talk about the player of the year in conference, SEC, when we come back. It's a simple drill that every kid should learn to do growing up, but especially when you are taken off the floor with something that keeps you from uh, running and jumping man get work on your shot form it's worked out really well for Fabian White now the free throw line Sasser knocks down the free throw and now 15 points and the next one will tie this back up at 52 all I like guys that grind when it doesn't go their way uh, that's the lesson to me from Fabian White Along those same lines, Nate Oates, of course, a great relationship with Nick Saban as Davison drives all the way to the baseline, and he'll kick it to Ellis for a three that's in and out. Saban said similar once after a tough loss last year for Nate Oates. He sent him a text that said, don't waste a failure, huh. which is a great way to look at it. Like, let's take advantage of what we just did by losing or suffering a setback. What did we learn? How do we get better? I thought that was a terrific message from Nick Saban. Don't waste a failure. Well, Davison nearly failed there, but he was able to get it to a teammate. And a high arcer is short off the window, and that's a foul on the rebound. They're going to get it on Noah Gurley. He's picked up his third. Rabbi, you can't take finesse shots in this ball game like Darius Miles just tried to do. Kind of a soft drive, I mean, a very finesse kind of finish at the rim. That, that will not work in this game. See how Alabama does with Quinley on the floor. Shackelford tried to draw a foul, and he didn't. Instead, he commits one. And Alabama picks up its fourth team foul. I have a sense there will be a bunch of free throws in the second half. <laughs> and just bounced that ball screen out, impacted hard. Ooh, Sasser. Oh, he buries a three, and he was about seven feet behind the three-point line. He, Sasser, has such tremendous leg strength. He shoots the ball from 26 to 27 as well as he does from 22. Well, Shackelford, wide open, needs that, and he buries yeah. it. They He's fire. their best three-point shooter. Fire with confidence, don't they, Ravi? Both ball clubs, especially Alabama, can miss three or four or five in a row, and it does not phase them one bit. 55 all a lot of mirror images between both these teams Sasser's too strong with that one and a good job by Shackelford to keep it in bounds Ellis goes to one corner mm. build a wall stop the ball exactly what Houston did Davison gets tough. it Ravi that's really tough because you had Gurley cutting in front of Davidson 
and Davison just kind of drove the drag off of it. Really well executed by Alabama. Back on top by two. J.D. Davison, the freshman. Shed the floater. He's been really good with that shot tonight. He knocks it in. He's got 11. Are you man enough to win your matchup a handful of times in this game? Rebound in traffic by one of the best, Tremont Mark. Missed three games with a shoulder. And as Kelvin Sampson said, when he is playing, our talent level goes way up. Well, he's a 12-point guy off the bench for Kelvin Sampson. He shot just okay last year, I think 25, 26% from the three-point line. Did Tremont Mark. Now he's up to 31%. But he is a one-point-every-two-minutes-that-he's-on-the-floor type guy for the team in black. Juwan Gary back into the game. Career high 17 already. And Alabama getting some time here without Quinterly on the floor. Shed right by Shackelford, who's open. Fabian White, he kicks it. Sasser open, but before that, oh, they call a block on Shackelford. The crowd here thought it was going to be an offensive foul. Shackelford's banged up a little bit. Drive to kick play by Fabian White. He was looking to kick the entire time. Yeah, Shackelford kind of jumped and still moving at the end. That's the proper call, but the eyes of Fabian White told you from the first bounce he was going to go to the back side of the play. Quinterly back on the floor for Alabama. Short on that shot, offensive rebound, missed underneath, White. And then underneath again is Juwan Roberts. Where the ball finds him, I get he's a great rebounder, the yep. ball finds him, doesn't it? Look out, adds an airmail, and Davison with Sasser talking to him, threw it into the officials on the other side of the floor. To your point, Jawan Roberts for Houston has as many offensive rebounds as he has shots taken on the year. <laughs> that tells you you don't run plays for a guy like that. He just goes and makes a play. One of the best offensive rebounders we have in the college game. The guy up top of the ball right now, 13 in black. Cougars on the road, lead by two, under 12 to play. Watch Shit, out. alley oop. Look <laughs> out. That ball was deflected. <laughs> Quinterly not slowing down, gets it to go. Boy, has he been magical tonight. I tell you, the speed of a cheetah. Javon Quinterly. What a game. And under off. control, too. You yeah. can see the difference between Quinterly with his experience and Davison, yeah, the freshman. You can just see it. Yep. How do you handle that top-level speed? Mm -hmm. Too strong. Davison had it for a chance. And How that ball is, is put up and in with the foul. The ball finds Jawan Roberts again. How good is he? Number 13 in the nation on the offensive rebound percentage. The plastic bubble on the rim. So every time the shot's taken, there's a, there's a, a war for the basketball. And again, he, he refuses to lower the bar for anybody. And their DNA is to out-tough you, out-fight you, especially on the glass. And it's led by this kid at the free throw line. Shed, mistake there. He picks up another foul. And that's going to be the fourth on the point guard for Houston. And they're going to take him out of the game. Didn't need to make that foul. Tasha Morris coming in for him. And then, see, 11-11, circle that. Shed goes to the bench for the two-point lead. That's a big foul because Sasser is not a pure point guard. He's a scoring guard, and Houston now will play extended minutes without a point guard on the floor. Gary, what a cut. Ooh, and a finger roll. That's what I'm talking about. If you don't hard cut in this game, you're giving yourself no chance, and Gary just turned it into a foot race from the far side of the floor to the paint. 19 for Gary, 61 all. Baseline jumper too strong. Bodies flying. There's Sasser. Wide open three. No good. Another offensive rebound. And he continues to haunt Alabama on the offensive glass. Jawan Roberts. 15 rebounds in 23 minutes against Hofstra. 12 rebounds in 23 minutes against Bryant. 
And there's a reason why this kid is so good. He wants and pursues the basketball while it's in the air, and his feet find the ball. He's not a reacher as a rebounder. He is a go-getter. You mentioned Dennis Rodman earlier tonight. He, he, that's made a living doing what Roberts yeah. is doing here at the collegiate level. <laughs> that is a great comparison. See how many good things happen when you listen? <laughs> to you <laughs> what a game to finish off fantastic Saturday of college basketball across the country you know they're so aggressive that you never want to take out of a team but think of the last two fouls Houston's committed shed going for a loose ball which he wasn't going to get and now yeah. Fabian white on a ball that was you know you weren't you weren't going to get it's not even a 50 50 ball the result, Houston has committed seven team fouls. So is Alabama. There is Miles to shoot one one. Miles, a 61% free throw shooter. The problems for Alabama from the free throw line continue. Seventeen for Sasser leads the way for Houston. The step through and the drive. What a dish! And there's Roberts. No rebound needed there with a flush. Houston just burned the pressure by keeping separation on their ball screen and allowed for an alley. And yet again, Quinterly is so good in the initial push. If you don't build a wall against Quinterly, he's going to get to the rim every single time. Thirteen point six assists for Javon Quinterly. 63 all less than 10 minutes to go in the game Little handoff flip the ball screen and the late knocked it loose Mark continues with it too strong You've got to be kidding Roberts another offensive rebound and a foul on Betty Ako Houston is wearing Alabama out the Roberts is wearing on Alabama the offensive out. glass. Yeah, Roberts is in particular but if you're Alabama right now and the shot's taken and you are ball watching, you are wrong. When the ball is in the air, Alabama has to go find black jerseys and hit first. And they are not doing it. The freshman Betty Ako will have to go to the bench with four fouls. And Juwan Roberts, the rebound machine, too strong with a free throw. Shackelford has it. They're still tied at 63. I think he misses on purpose, hoping he can get another <laughs> rebound. I'm just saying. Teardrop, Shackelford, he gets that to go. A play that Shaq really couldn't make when he first came here as a freshman. Now doing damage off the bounce is five and white. He's got 11, the crowd on its feet. Eight on the shot clock for Sasser, guarded by Shackelford. Launches. He was online, but short. Davison shown he's not afraid to go up and get a rebound. Good, fast transition ball screen by Betty Ako. The ball stuck on this side of the floor, though. Shackelford. That's in traffic. Early had it. They're going to pick up a foul on Houston. Call that on Fabian White. We may have to replace the P in the whistle at some point. Because <laughs> they are wearing them out. Has that ever happened in a game? It, you have it, a backup whistle? Yeah. No, it hasn't. But there was a game we did earlier this year between UConn and VCU. If that <laughs> was going to happen, it would have happened in that game. Look at this foul trouble. That's, that, that's a lot of addition to add up. Twenty-two fouls and the free throw rolls over the front iron and that is good for Noah Gurley the Furman transfer And this kid was a three-time Southern Conference all Conference player over 1100 points at Furman he Actually came in this building last year and scored 15 points against Alabama and 
If he gets up to around 34, 35% from three, that's a big, big shot in the arm for Alabama's offense. Right now, he's stuck around 25%. Bama by three. Eight and a half to go. Josh Carlton trying to muscle in against Gurley. Got him in the air. No foul. And that time, Quinterly comes away with it. He knows one speed That's all it. the way to the rack, and he lays it up and lays it in. Quinterly, 15 points, and Alabama increases its lead to five. He just takes it to the house. So what do you do if you're Houston? First of all, all five dudes, man, you got to sprint and get your get yourself in the paint and build out from there. I know Alabama wants to stretch you from the three-point line, but the ball is the most important thing in transition. Did you catch yourself? Like, were you going to say something else? I was, actually. I thought you were. I, I mean, it's close to midnight, probably acceptable. Oh, I man. Since you were about to say, get your something back. Sasser on the ground. He kicked Davison in the face. And the ball loose. Edwards three. Too strong. Wow. Why not? Goes up. Great pass to Carlton. Another offensive rebound for Juwan Roberts. It's been a long time since I've seen one guy wear out an entire team on the offensive glass like Juwan Roberts is doing. He got 11 rebounds tonight. How many? 11. I'm guessing, what, five, six of five them have or been six. offense? Maybe seven. Do I hear eight? He's the best offensive rebounder I've seen this year outside of Oscar Shibway at Kentucky. Quinterly, oh, it is so rare. We've seen so many guys fade away with shots and come up short. You yeah. were critical of that in the Bahamas. Rare, but that was a fade away from Quinterly, who's 5 of 6 with 11 points in the second half. One of the few tough twos that Alabama will take during the course of the game. That's right. Quinterly, great defense, gets a steal on the floor. Possession arrow to Houston, but the next time it's Alabama's, and that gets made. Oates pumping his fist. How about the game JQ's having? A high. Week at ESPN, our partnership with the V Foundation highlights the urgent need for cancer research and the elimination of racial disparities and cancer outcomes. You can learn more and help support by visiting v.org slash donate 100% and your donation goes directly to cancer research. We do beat the drum, but it's a drum that is worth beating. Our buddy Dickie Vitale will be with John Shambi and Chris Budden tomorrow for Villanova and Baylor. At the buzzer, that's too short, and that will be a shot clock violation. Carton caught it. So we asked rhetorically, like, you know, he said, how many offensive rebounds? Five, six, seven, do I hear eight? Juwan Roberts has eight offensive rebounds of his ten. <laughs> He has so many. When's the last time an official came over to us at the timeout and said, hey, how many offensive rebounds does this 13 and black have? <laughs> That's the imprint that he's putting on this game. Yeah, and this guy right here with the ball has certainly put his imprint on the game. 17 points. He's made seven of eight shots tonight. Javon Quinterly. And working hard again with a teardrop blocked there by Carlton and Sasser. Terrific job by Carlton as a secondary defender. Oh, what Counted. a play. He drew the foul on Shackelford, and Sasser knocks it down. They were down by five. That's a big bucket. Yeah, they, both these teams are going to be very hard to handle come March because they do so many things so well. Their versatility defensively, their speed overall, their ability to just punk you on the glass and make tough guarded shots. We said in the open, would not be surprised at all for Houston and Alabama to be right back in that Sweet 16 Elite Eight Final Four conversation when we get there. 70, 68, 6, 18 to go. What have you learned about both teams tonight that maybe you didn't know? Anything? They've given me everything I expected. I, their, their ball screen defense, they've been exposed a little bit, but for the most part, Impacting the ball screen and winning the line of scrimmage is huge and these clubs are terrific at it. set play Quinterly had it halfway down and out and Now Houston with a chance to tie or grab the lead Sasser all Got the him. way to the hole pretty drive look at the battle for the offensive rebound and it ended up in the hands of Roberts Kick three shed and it goes down once again to Juan Roberts with an offensive rebound I tell you what I've learned that right on film, I knew Houston was dynamic. Oh. 
the other way, J.D. Davison, and he draws the foul. Sorry, but this thing's back no, and it forth. Is. Here's what I've learned. At Houston is a better offensive rebounding club than their numbers show and the film shows. Alabama is faster in transition than what the film shows. And that failure to get back and stop the ball and build a wall has hurt Houston multiple times, Ravi, in this game. Right, multiple so times. He's got nine offensive rebounds. What is he doing that's allowing him to grab the offensive rebounds all the time? What are you seeing? Well, he, he's he's very quick, first of all. Still talking about 13 and black. He's very quick, and he reads the ball and pursues the ball as well as anyone we have in the college game. He's only 6'7", talking about Jawan Roberts, but he has a, a Valentine the size of this building. Five and a half to go. Caught underneath. Sasser. He's got eight on the shot clock, trapped in a corner. Dribbles out of it, launches. No good. That's Carlton wow. with an offensive rebound. Somebody other than Roberts. You get so concerned if you're Alabama with Roberts, you almost send two guys to him, and just opens up the alley for Carlton to come in, the transfer from UConn. 19 offensive rebounds. Shackleford three. That's too strong. And the foul is going to be called on Juwan Gary. Shackleford has not knocked down the threes you used to seeing him make any. They've only taken tonight, which is a big story. You know, Alabama's made a living shooting 29 threes. Nope. Not the way that they're doing it tonight. They are 5 of 15 in the game. Again, we mentioned Dickie V, our friend Boog Shambi, and Chris Budden tomorrow, Villanova Baylor. A couple of the top six teams, 3 o'clock Eastern time. It's in Waco, advantage Baylor there. And a win would make them the presumptive number one team in the country. Looking forward to that one. That is a good one. It's on ABC tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern time. Ravi, I don't know how we judge who has the best culture or belief or DNA in terms of who they are. I just know those two programs tomorrow are at a high, high level. There's not a better culture than Baylor. I know Villanova is tremendous, but they're not any better than Baylor in that area. You and I were with them in the Bahamas for three days, and we saw it firsthand. I think these two teams right here have just as much belief as those two teams tomorrow in terms of how do we play to win a game? Yeah, Davison got trapped. He's able to get it to Gary, who's having a great night. Great block that time by Carton, who came over to help out. One hand finesse finish again will not work in this ball game. Get yourself foul going with two and go through somebody's chin. Houston by two. Sasser with the ball. He'll start here with 10 on the shot clock. Shed all the way. That's off the side of the backboard. And now the freshman Davison will run out. He will get fouled on the other end, and it'll be Tajay Moore. Now, one thing about the freshman, the five-star superstar J.D. Davison, there is no... It's all about winning. Both these programs, Nate's done a fantastic job as well getting their guys to believe 1,000%. This is how we're supposed to play. Right. That's a huge part of coaching. Can't defend and rebound, you have no, no. chance. At least None. in Kelvin Sampson's world. And Alabama has worked hard on their defense, and they just made a living last year. That for a lot of the games, and we did a lot of them, it felt like if their shots are going in, they're going to win. Yeah. If they're not, there's a real good chance that they're not going to win. The game. You've got to have that other part, and Nate Oates has made it. Real concerted effort to get his team to buy in on the defensive end. All right, under four to go in a one-point game. Can Alabama finish off the defensive possession in this game with a rebound? That's probably where the game's going to be decided. Yeah, try to work on Bediaco, and he may have got him out of the game. Bediaco wrapped his hand around Carlton. He comes back in the game for a few seconds, and he picks up foul number five. That's Kelvin Sampson saying, wait, he's coming back. He's a guy we were focused on in practice. Yep. Let's see if we can get him out. Alabama has gone one-on-one -on -one coverage on the post in this game when Betty Ako has been at the five. They've not had to double because he's guarded his spot, but he's also now picked up his fifth foul. Carlton is such a key piece, I think, for Houston going forward. He knows who he is, has never taken a three-point shot in his career, the kid for Houston at the line, and now the young freshman sits down. He battled, yep. but he's also battled foul trouble, and 
That's a big loss in terms of size at the rim for Alabama with 346 to go. Sure is. But again, as Saban's text to Oates, don't waste the failure. This is a learning experience yeah. for the freshman out of Canada. Bariaco is caught in three throw misses. How do you get a kid from Canada to come from Alabama? Well, Primo and Ambrose are both Canadian. They played with him. So there was that pipeline. And their assistant coach is from Jamestown, New York. He's upstate New York, so not far. And that's how Bediaco ends up here as Carlton knocks down the next one. And Houston's lead now two. And Ravi, only Chet Holmgren at Gonzaga and Jalen Dern at Memphis have a higher block rate in the freshman class in Bediaco. So Alabama loses some rim protection with him gone. Shaq Wilford knocks in a three, and he gets knocked to the ground. That puts Alabama back on top. Shackenford has tremendous leg strength. I mean, he's built like a fire hydrant from the waist down. When he gets his feet set, he goes, goes straight up on you and just does a really good job, I think he does, of chasing the ball but keeping separation. And the contact comes, and Nate Oates says, that's my guy. And he also said, that's my set play, and that worked beautifully. <laughs> Miller really going to be careful there. He was looking for a body of the screen, and then when one came, he started to move, but he didn't have to make contact. And Shackelford completes a three point play. Back and forth we go, tied by two. Both teams, 10 fouls, double bonus. Each will shoot two. The shed by Quinterly, reverse, no good. Offensive rebound and a foul. Give that to Carlton. And they are winning the battle on the boards. The value again of just getting the ball up on the glass if you're Houston. Shed just with a blow by of Quinterly. And Carlton just goes right in front of the rim. He didn't get stuck on the floor when Quinterly drove that baseline, Ravi. He went right to the restricted arc at the front of the rim and cleaned up the miss. Houston Jimmy currently with four players with four fouls. Alabama's already seen Betty Yako foul out. Gurley and Gary each have four. High Archer goes for Carlton. Houston on top by one. Three minutes and six seconds to go in the game. Kind of Robert Parrish. Type oh, release, like wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, very, very well, much certainly so with like the Robert arc on the shot. Yeah. Shackleford Again. set play, knocks down another one. You know it's coming. If you're Houston right now, you have to be there on the catch. Tagging, caboosing, chasing, no airspace. Jaden Shackleford left Alabama, went to the NBA tryout camp. The Sasser shot is no good, and that time they do box out. And in a sense, Oates had to re-recruit Jaden Shackelford. Yeah. He was considering other places to go play based on what he was told at the NBA tryouts. He ended up back here at Alabama, and he has proven to be huge late in this game. Yeah, he was searching for what he maybe thought was more of an NBA system. <laughs> There's not more of an NBA system than Alabama. And Shackelford working off the ball the last two possessions. Nate Oates needs to control himself out of the ball screen. And Mike Nance and the crew saw it differently. Nate Oates saw it like I did. So Betty Ocko and Gurley have both That's fouled up. That's a turnover. Quinterly was there to try to bother Shedd, who went up and had it deflect off his hand. And Alabama with a two-point lead with 2.17 to go with the ball on a turnover by Houston. Ravi, a mistake by Houston to leave one guy in the backcourt breaking to get open. It became a one-on-one -on -one battle and Alabama won. Alabama's done a terrific job not turning it over in the second half. 11 for the game. And now Houston with 10 turnovers. And what a game. You and I had one of the highest level games so far this season in the Bahamas between UConn and Auburn. This has a very similar feel to it. Davison Looking for an open man. Yeah. Ellis, good three-point shooter. No good there. And a wide open three. Davison did a good job, though, of playing off of two feet, not getting sped up like he did a little bit in the first half. Yeah. 
Shed lost it. Again, a turnover. Coupled by Houston here late. Both clubs so good at attacking the ball with both hands when you attack a gap. They don't reach with one. Nothing soft on this floor. Quinterly, one-on-one, the dump off. Gary lays it up, and that ball is on the rim. It'll be called offensive goaltending. Rev, you got to make the first one, right? That first one's right there at the rim. A two-foot shot, uncontested. You and drive you, and therefore they bring their offensive rebounders into play, making it a foot race to the glass. Can you get another defensive rebound would be the last thing if I'm Nate Oates, I tell my guys when they break that huddle. Well, I know this. Good things have happened anytime it's on the rim. And Roberts, with nine offensive rebounds, is picked up by a guy giving up about four or five inches in J.D. Davison. Yeah. D Davison cannot come off of Roberts. Sasser keeps it alive. One minute to go in the game. Ten on the shot clock. Sasser, long three. Got it! Wow. Woo! Marcus Sasser, 23 for the game, and it's now Houston within one. Some guys, should say up one. Some guys just have that about them, and Sasser's one of them. The, 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 the stage is never too big for Marcus Sasser. Javon Quinterly's been the star tonight. He'll take it. Tough shot. Rebound! J.D. Davison with a flush. And how about the freshman? No ball screen, just lets Quinterly whip his guy and win the one-on-one -on -one match. And again, the foot race from the three-point line to the glass. Both teams has been spectacular tonight. That's what you learn about J.D. Houston has been in this situation before their lone loss this year to Wisconsin. It was Shed who had a chance at the buzzer to win it. And it didn't happen. See what happens here as they inbounds the basketball to Kyler Edwards. Bama won the Heisman about three hours ago, and they're trying to win a very important game to have on their resume right now. And it's in the hands of Sasser. He's no got 23 screen. tonight. No ball screen, just let him go to work. Loose ball, recovered. Three, two, one. Off the iron, tipped up, no good, out of bounds. Alabama will defend the home court. Kelvin Sampson is screaming that that was a goaltend, and the ball was still on the rim when Davison sent it away. He's looking.